Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Checked In. If you are a regular listener, thanks so much for tuning back in. And if you are newer here, welcome. I am so glad you found the show. I'm Camille Whitestern. I lead experiential marketing at Splash, and Checked In is dedicated to helping marketing and event professionals learn from experts about how to create meaningful experiences that amplify their brand, boost engagement, and generate revenue for their business. So it's a new year, and you may be feeling that new me energy and wondering which aspects of your event marketing strategy need some updating or zhuzhing to meet your buyers where they are and adapt to new trends in attendee behavior. Just to call a spade a spade, the times are a changing, my friends. And for many marketers, it's kind of feeling like a whole new ball game. So here are just a few of the challenges we're facing, right? Economic uncertainty, budget cuts, layoffs, rising costs for travel and staffing and food and beverage, not to mention attendees who are increasingly more selective with their time. The fact of the matter is that the mission of getting your target attendees to show up to your events has quite possibly never been harder. I know. I know. So how can you improve your event attendance rate, right? Well, as you can imagine, having a thoughtful event promotion strategy is definitely key. And we actually have another episode that's completely dedicated to that. I get really deep into 13 different tips that you can leverage in your strategy to really get your promotion strategy locked in. But this episode, we're going to dig into three steps, really a framework to help you improve your attendance rate. So let's get checked in. So first, let's talk about how to measure your attendance rate and, and some healthy benchmarks to look for with a little real life scenario. So let's say we're hosting an event and we have an attendance goal or let's say a venue capacity of about 100 people in person. And sidebar, you would have other event goals besides an attendance goal, right? This episode isn't about goal setting per se. Check out our other episodes that specifically get into goal setting in depth. But back to this scenario, let's say that our invitation to registration rate is about 10%, okay? And if we want to make sure the room, the, the venue is, is full, right? And we want a healthy flow of people throughout the event, let's say we're aiming for 4x our capacity in terms of what we're looking for registration-wise, right? So we're looking for about 400 people to register. Based on that 10% invitation to registration rate, you'd need to send about 4,000 invitations to your database or your community or your network. And hopefully you're using a CRM and you've got that integrated with your event marketing and registration platform, and that is a breeze. Um, okay. And because we know that there's going to probably be some attrition, right, in the days and hours leading up to an event, life happens, we want to plan for that. So let's set a, an actual um, like goal of 150 people who are going to, at some point, walk through those event doors, right? So that is what we're talking about when I say event attendance rate. We're, we're thinking about the ratio from invitation to registration to attendance, right? But in this episode, what we're going to focus on is ways that you can improve that registration to attendance rate. Okay, so let's get into our framework. This is a three-step framework that is really based on the concept of reciprocity, which is just the practice of exchanging things with others for mutual benefit. And what I'm really talking about here is the idea of providing value to your attendees. This is hopefully not a foreign concept to you. And what you need to do is efficiently communicate that value and then remind them of that value in the time leading up to your event in your pre-event communications, right? So I, I got to pause and must give credit where credit is due. I learned this framework from Splash's co-founder, Ben Hinman, who broke it down to me like this. To use a reciprocity, this reciprocity framework to improve your attendance rate, you need to first get the attendee to invest. That is step one. 
step two is to confirm that they made a good decision. And we'll talk about the email sequence and the pre-event comms that you can actually use to do that, right? And then step number three, you got to lock it in. You got to really sell it, drive it home, and make sure they they are 1,000% convinced that they've made a good decision with their investment from step one, okay? So let's dive further into step one. Whether your event is an RSVP only or a ticketed event, I, I am just, I'm going to like pause and take a deep breath because this is so important. You have to make sure there's a calendar invite on their calendar. You might be thinking, okay, Captain Obvious, I know this, but let me explain. You want your attendees to be giddy with excitement and counting down the days to your event, right? But at the very least, you want them to have the event blocked on their calendar. If it's virtual, they'll need to make sure that they don't have a meeting or another obligation booked over the time of your event. Or if they do, at least, fingers crossed, you can get them with that on demand, right? Okay. But if it's in person, they'll need to plan time to travel to and from your event. Sidebar and bonus, making it easy for your attendees to show up could look like a voucher or a code for a ride-sharing app like Uber or a Lyft, or you could look into other ways to cover their travel in part or in full. This can go a long way, trust me. But back to you know the, the what they need to do in order to show up to your event, right? They might need to make arrangements for things like childcare or pet care. I could go on and on, but my point is it's a big ask for someone to show up to your event because what we're really asking them is to give us their time, right? We want them to invest their time. And quite frankly, it might even cost them money, actual dollars or euros or whatever currency you use, right? It might cost them money for them to attend your event. So you really need to make it worth their time and money and effort, right? It's got to be worth their investment. There has to be reciprocity. So the first step, you know, is is really just making sure they're making that investment, right? And you need to get them to commit to that investment of attending your event. I think, you know, especially for non-ticketed events, we do mostly RSVP events at Splash. It's all about investing their time. And the reality is that if it's not on their calendar, they're not invested. And then they're for sure not going to show up. So I know this might seem obvious, but it is so critical. And this first step is honestly made a lot easier with event tech platforms like Splash, which make it easy for attendees to just register and then add that event to their calendar through that little calendar attachment button. Simple click and boom, it's on there, right? Then they can plan accordingly. I'll just quickly add that another technique you can use to get people invested in your event before they even show up is to get them to apply to attend or even join a waitlist maybe, right? And you can use a waitlist fu wait functionality through your event registration platform. Um, and I have a whole other episode on beating attrition where I talk more about the power of waitlist and this whole concept of applying to attend, but it's really impactful because this kind of move is essentially getting your target attendees to invest in their ego, right? You are validating that they are someone who should be at your event, right? This is kind of more of a psychological move very powerful nonetheless. Okay, on to step number two. Once you've gotten your attendees to invest something with you, like their time or their money, ideally their time, no matter what, it's going to be their time if they're attending an event, right? Your job is to make sure they remember why they RSVP'd, why they made that investment in the first place, right? Here's the thing they will second guess their decision to make that investment at some point. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I would rather just all of us operate in this realm of reality, right? Which is, you know, they're going to second guess it. They're going to ask themselves, maybe I don't need to attend that one, right? Maybe I don't need to attend that event. So it is your job to anticipate that 
and then proactively counter that inevitable doubt, that moment of hesitation, with frequent and consistent confirmation that yes, they have made the best decision to invest their time in your event, right? So you need to reassure them that this is going to be worth it. Um, And for this second step, I love to think about leveraging well-timed announcements. So I ask myself, how can I continue to build hype around this event? What do attendees really want to get out of this experience? And then I just weave that messaging into my pre-event communication strategy. By the way, one hack I absolutely love for this is to include a custom question in the event registration form. This is something that gives me insight into the attendee that I can then reference in a personalized email or phone call leading up to the event. And it works like a charm, honestly. Um, And when it comes to your well-timed announcements, you could announce a speaker or your entertainment lineup. Maybe you're going to share details about your food and beverage menu or your venue, right? Which honestly, details about venue is is a must-have. It is not, people expect it, right? Especially in this post-COVID world. So for more intimate events with the goal of network or community building, perhaps you share who else is attending so that people can kind of get a sense and get excited about who they might meet and connect with at your event. So after an RSV confirmation email, depending on how many weeks is left leading up to the event, I typically am sending at least three emails, right? At least three touch points, but usually it's closer to five to seven. And again, it depends on how far in advance of that event that registration is happening. And it also depends on the nature of the event. For virtual events, I'd likely send fewer emails than for in-person events. But the one thing that I will say is that there's really an art and a science to nailing your pre-event email strategy. And honestly, the best way and, you know, the best thing to look at to help you with the science side of this is to really look at the analytics for your emails, right? So if you're using a platform like Splash, there's a tab in your analytics dashboard that just gives you that necessary view into how your pre-event comms are performing, right? Which emails are being opened? What are the click-through rates? These are leading indicators that can give you a sense of event attendance rate even before the event happens. And then that data can also go a long way in informing what your email strategy should be. Do you need to make tweaks to it um, leading up to the event that fits your event and your audience? Okay. Finally, step three, right? So we have gotten attendees to make a commitment and we have confirmed that they have made a good decision. Step three is to lock it in. Okay. So As a final step in this reciprocity framework, you will want to schedule a commitment with the attendee. And doing this with a real person is the real key here, okay? So um, you're going to want to send a personalized plain text email or send a LinkedIn message. It could be a text message or even a phone call, right? Maybe you get your whole BDR team to do a call blitz, right? Just make sure it's coming from a real human, this final touch point, right? And typically, you'd want to save this for your VIPs, but if you have a big enough team, you could do it for all your attendees. Or on the flip side, if the event is intimate enough, this just might not be a huge lift and you could do it for everyone. But what do I mean when I say scheduling a commitment? Let's dig in there. So it doesn't have to be major. Okay, let's just don't panic. (laughs) It doesn't have to be major. But the thing is to keep it specific. The more specific, the better. So maybe name, you know, a time, a location, and a person, right, that this VIP is going to meet with. Maybe you're going to connect this VIP with another VIP who's attending. Or maybe they're just going to connect with you or a member on your team who will be at the event, right? Lots of options there. Um, You know, you might even want to play around and reference that uh, VIP's response to their custom question that you may be included in the registration form to make this final touch point feel even more personalized and tailored to the experience that they're hoping to get out of your event, right? So the point is you really want to cast this last and final hook to deepen your attendees' commitment to showing up. It's a lot 
easier to flake out on an event than it is to flake out on a person. And the bright side is that you can actually automate things like these personalized plain text emails too, which give you more time for tactics that are maybe a little bit more hands-on, like connecting through LinkedIn or calling attendees to confirm their attendance, aka confirm their investment. So that's the three-step reciprocity-based framework to help improve your event attendance rates. Before I wrap up this episode, one last pro tip and something to think about how you can implement. I've said this before and I'll say it again and again, but great people get great people. So I've mentioned leveraging a host committee or tapping into communities for more targeted event promotion, right? That's one way to get great people to get great people to your event. And when it comes to improving your event attendance rates, this applies too. So how can you encourage your attendees to essentially invite people in their network to show up? Consider, where it makes sense, offering a plus one or let attendees invite a friend or a colleague. This is a really powerful and subtle way to get attendees more deeply committed to showing up, right? Because when you think about it, if their friend or their colleague or someone in their network that they kind of invited is registered. All of a sudden, the idea of bailing on your event means they'd also be bailing on their friend or their colleague, right? And this just makes it way harder for them to flake last minute. So of course, this won't make sense for every single event that you run, but it is definitely something to consider and experiment with. Whew! Okay, I packed a lot into this one, so let's recap quickly. Leaning into a pre-event communication strategy based on this three-step reciprocity framework looks like step number one, getting attendees to make an investment of time or money or both. Step number two, confirming that they made a good decision and made a good investment that you will reciprocate. And step number three, locking it in, getting them to commit to something at your event, lock in their investment, get them to invite a friend, just get them on the hook to show up, make it really hard for them to bail on your event. Okay, of course, having the right event marketing platform is a major piece of this puzzle. So you can simplify and automate as much of your process as you can and keep your comms totally on brand because that is a non-negotiable in this market. And of course, measure along the way and refine your strategy. So if you're curious and wanting to learn more about how Splash can help you do that, join our next virtual Meet Splash event. We'll include the link to sign up for that in the show notes for this episode. Okay, folks, that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting this show. We release new content pretty much weekly, so be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. And we love requests for topics to cover and questions to answer, so reach out to us at podcast at splashthat.com. That's podcast at splashthat.com or, 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 Connect with me on LinkedIn. I love when people connect with me and drop me a message there. And you can find me by searching by my name, Camille Whitestern. Alrighty, y'all. Hopefully this episode has offered a few nuggets to help you improve your event attendance rates and ultimately get more out of your events. I know it's rough out there. Hang in there. And until next time, take care.